D D D D DJ double double It's DJ double here and today I'm sat with man like bonkers. What's happening, bro? My G double. Been a long time, man. How you been? It has been a minute. It's been almost two. In fact, it's been over two years. Yeah. Since you've been on the show, welcome back. Thanks, man. Um, I remember you telling me before when you first started out, you wanted to go through your whole career without doing any interviews. Yeah, like it was the idea I had, didn't it? How's that working out? It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, man. It's not. Do you know what it is? I kind of. You know, when you first start out, you always have these, like, unrealistic ideas and stuff, you know what I mean? And I just thought it would be kind of cool to only just speak through the music, you know what I mean? But then, Mm -hmm. as you go along, you realise you kind of have to speak to people and, like, you know, help people to understand your message and what you're about, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's a game to be played that's that's deeper than music. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So we're we're in Fort and Heath right now. Yeah. Now, I made sure as soon as I got here that I got a glass of water. Because <laughs> How come? there's definitely something in the water around here, man. <laughs> this, the success that's coming out of this part, yeah, yeah, like yeah. the amount of people, like what, what would you put it down to? That that means this area has been. Um, I think the first thing was just the talent. You know what I mean? Like if you look at all the individuals coming from here, it's kind of, you know, everyone's actually good. Do you know what I mean? I think that's the first thing, and then the second thing is just like the motivation and the fact that it's so realistic to us, do you know what I mean? Because we all literally grew up together, so we see our friends go and have, like, major success, and it just becomes more and more realistic. Like, when I see Crepton and Conan achieve certain things, or Storms, or whatever, Section, everyone, it just becomes realistic, because these are my friends, and you can see them doing it, you know what I mean? Yes, it's like being a product of your own environment, right? Exactly. <laughs> Got you. So, how old were you when Quality Control 1 dropped? Um, like how, how long ago was that? I think, I think it was like 2011, 12 maybe. Right. Yeah. As an artist, like, have you noticed much of a change between Quality Control 1 and 2? Um, I think it's like the same process, so it hasn't changed in that way. It's the same process, meaning it's just me giving like my outlook on life at that moment in time. Do you know what I mean? Right, so okay. that's what Quality Control 1 was how I see life at that moment in time, what's going on in my life, how I'm feeling. It was like a certain vulnerability to it. Like, I'm really talking about how I'm currently feeling, what's going on, what's going right, what's going wrong. Do you know what I mean? So, <clears throat> number two, I wanted to just capture that exact essence and method again. So, it's pretty much the same project, but just different feelings and different emotions and different situations this time. Right, so it's like a time stamp as to where you are yeah in life right now Literally. is this going to be is it like a a series now that you're going to do just checking in with like quality control or have you yeah yeah one or two no i'm all i think i'm always going to do this like for as long as i'm rapping i feel like i'm going to do this because it's like it can't actually end like there's no way for it to end do you yeah, know what yeah. i mean unless i just i'd have to just stop making music or something like that you know what i mean so i'm always going to check in but i don't want to ever do them too close to each other because I want a lot to change and then I go back to it again. So it's like right. I've got a big like a big section of my life to recap on and talk about, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. The first thing I took away from it was like, this is music that Bonkers wants to make. Yeah, like exactly. He's not gone in the studio and thought, right, what's banging right now? Like, how can we make it onto radio with this project? Like, what do the people want to hear? This is like, all right, this is what I want to make. So is that, yeah. would you say that's true for the whole project? Yeah, definitely. And because it was quality control, it's like there was no way I could go back in, in the studio and try and fit in with anything else or try to do anything other than, you know, what's real to me because the, the first one was so real to me. And at that time as well, it was even more of a shock to everyone because at that time, everything kind of sounded the same. You know what I mean? So for me to come and do like, quality control one mm-hmm. all them years ago and you know i think i've grown as an artist but even back then i was still really trying to make songs and like big concepts big songs big choruses like everything i was really trying to put it together from from a young age you know what i mean so with the second one i just had to live up to that man definitely is the whole project produced by soul yeah from top to bottom all of it shouts to soul man he, yeah, sick <laughs> guy, man. Sick there. guy sick guy did you pick like 11 beats and then record them or did you was quality control 2 
like a short list of a bigger list of music that you made? Um, no, it was literally about a six week process that we'd done it. So um, there was there was no beats, you know what I mean? It was like from the first session, me and Soul went in the studio from scratch, no beats. He started building something. I just started putting vocals down. And the majority of it was like that. I'd go to the studio and he'll start building a beat, maybe around something that I've said or just a particular vibe that I said I wanted, you know what I mean? And he'll just start building the beat and we'll just kind of build the song as we go along. Because I write lyrics kind of quick, so by the time he's got like just a rough skeleton of the beat, I've probably got a verse written. Right. So I go and record my verse just over like a rough stripped back version. And then once he's heard my voice and my delivery, he starts adding to it. So it was just like a process of, you know, back and forth, like creativity between us, you know what I'm saying? There was one beat that, um, the beat for Easier, which is the last track, mm -hmm. I was on the way to the studio. And it's weird, cause I've never actually written like a whole song without a beat before, but I had these lyrics in my head and I just couldn't like stop them from coming to me. So I just kept like, writing it and usually i don't write lyrics down but this song was like so important i just started writing it in my phone i had the whole song just already written out structured and everything and then i came to the studio and then <clears throat> i think soul was gonna start on another beat and i was like no scrap that for now like let me sing this to you and i just sang it to him and then he just started building the beat like while i was singing it and it was like a weird process for me but it worked out organic man yeah trust me why did you decide that this was going to be quality control too as a mixtape and not release it as an album because to um, me you know that drake line what's the line drop the mixtape and it sounded, sounded like, like an album, album. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's something that really like yeah to me, applies I feel, to this project do you know i genuinely feel that way as well with this project like i'm actually very proud of this project but i like i need the pressure do you know what i mean because like for me first albums are the most important thing to me in any musician's career like all of my favorite artists no matter what genre no matter what time they came from they're all my favorite artists because of that first album do you know what i mean with eminem um 50 cent with get rich or die trying if you want to go over to like the indie side with the kooks their first album even like Art and Monkeys, their first album, like every one of my favorite artists is my favorite artist because of that first album. Some of them I haven't even heard their second album. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so yeah. it's like, <clears throat> so that's the importance of it for me. So I think doing these projects, you know, and doing um, Quality Control 2.0, it kind of sounds like an album, but dropping it as a mixtape, it's just that pressure that I need. So when I actually do make my album now, it has to be better than all of them put together. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm just putting pressure on myself and trying to make it work for the first album. You get me? With the intro, so straight away, like I knew off the bat that this was going to be a project that I have to sit down and listen to because yeah. with the intro, there's no mucking about. I think there's yeah. one beat before your voice starts. You know what yeah, I mean? There's no yeah, yeah, build yeah. up to it. It's just boom, straight into it. Yeah. Was that something that, you thought, you know what, let's do this deliberately or did it just kind of happen in the recording process? No, I wanted it to be like that, man, because um, I think someone else in the studio was saying, like, usually intros are meant to be kind of progressive and mm -hmm. build up as they go along, in it? Because it's the beginning of a project. But someone was saying, look, how about we take the drums out the beat at the start and then gradually bring them in so it builds up. And I was just like, no, like, I don't even want anything to happen before I start rapping. I just want the moment you press play, you're just nodding your head from yeah, the yeah. from the start until the finish of the intro and then the project starts. So for me, the intro isn't even like like a trailer. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like a trailer. And then from track two, that's when the project kind of starts. But I didn't want to play with it. I just wanted to go straight in. Mm. There's the line in there of, of, <coughs> about Chippy, of course. Yeah, yeah, which my boy. you mentioned straight away like it's not a diss, but yeah. was it misinterpreted by any people? Have you had people like, oh, why are you firing at Chip? Like, no, 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 no. To be honest, I don't think I actually needed to to clear it up. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But it's just something that I wanted to do because I even messaged him just the other day and I was like, yo, like, just big up. You get me? You've inspired me a lot, like, since I've known you or whatever. But, um... I didn't have to clear the lineup because I don't think anyone heard it and thought he's directly dissing him. But um, I just wanted to say the bit about, you know, me going to his house and being inspired by that. So yeah, I yeah, just yeah. thought that was the best way for me to actually lead from it to lead into that line where I could then go and say, yeah, like I was sitting at the table in his crib and got inspired. You know what I mean? So yeah. I just wanted to say that line, really. 
you mentioned in the intro as well about having autism. Yeah, yeah. So is yeah. that real or was it like just a wordplay? Yeah, no, it's a thing. It's like it's in my family, you know what I'm saying? It's in my family, like my nephews my nephew's got it. It's not too severe, but there's so many different like sides to the spectrum, you get me? So it's in my family, it runs in my family, but I remember I went for the um assessments and that when I was in school mm -hmm. and then kinda like before the end I was just like, No, nah, like I'm not going back there, do you know what I mean? I don't want to go back. I didn't want them to tell me. You get me? Right, so yeah, um, yeah. it's kind of something that, it's just in the back of my mind, like, could it's in my family and because I had to have all those assessments and that in school, it's always been in the back of my mind, you know what I mean? And I do clock certain, like, things in my character that kind of fit in. Because right. I remember the people were saying when we were doing, like, the assessments to my mum, like, look, every single thing on this list is part of his behavioural pattern right, and this okay, is da 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 yeah. but then towards the end I was just like no scrap that I just don't want I got a problem with diagnosis like I'd rather you just not tell me and then I just try and live with it <laughs> just you leave it me? a mystery yeah 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 there's a few really good collaborations on it I feel like all the collabs for the project have been picked like really well everyone yeah. suits the record that they were on yeah definitely so how did you go about picking the people that you wanted on there Um, you know with the singers as well I kind of feel like when you look at the US projects, they always kind of champion their R&B singers. You know what I mean? Some would, someone would always want a Chris Brown or a Trey Songs or one of these guys like on their project. You know what I mean? And over here, I feel like we don't we don't really do it enough. But these guys are actually on levels with those guys in America. Do you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? So that was kind of a conscious thing I had in my head from before. Let me just hit these guys up and get them involved in the project. Um, I wanted some big choruses as well, you know what I mean? I know, like, I like to dabble in the singing thing every now and then, but I don't have, like, that crazy voice, and I wanted some really big choruses, like Pressure and the the one on the Jay Warner tune, the La Week S-A-N one, you know what mm. I mean? So that's why I just got these guys in, man. I was kind of looking at it like, like a film, and I just needed these guys to come and act in it for me and just bring their character to it. Mark Azari killed it as well, man. Like, yeah, sick guy, man. I really think he's under the, a lot of people's radars. Like, yeah. He's way up there. So. He's sick, though. But he was just on the um, Fifty Shades of Grey album, though. Right, okay. For I the know yeah, for the movie. That. So he, he's doing his thing, man, but he's very, very sick. Might be a good year for him. Yeah, no, hopefully. he is, definitely. That particular song, when I was listening to it, and it makes sense now because with you telling me that it was like a timestamp with where you are now. Mm hmm so last year, the situation where like there was that BBC witch hunt stuff yeah, and your yeah, name yeah. was dragged through, was that song kind of addressing that situation? Um, in a way, yeah, like the chorus in it, the pressure, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like being able to just take the pressure, but it's more like most of my songs are always kind of like five or six different situations dragged into one. So there'll be a bit of that, a bit of this, a bit of someone else's situation that I've witnessed or seen you know what i mean because i mm -hmm. always wanted to inspire people so yeah like it wasn't like a direct thing but it's just about life in general you know what i mean like no matter what they throw at you you always have to like i think that's the that's kind of like what life is to me like no matter what they throw at you you find a way to come out like there's never not a way there's always a way to come out of something better like yeah, bigger yeah. and better you know what i mean and that's just how i feel now cash money's sick yeah like that's that's a heavy track. Big up to S Loud as well. Yeah, that's my brother. Um, yeah, you killed it with that. That for me, that was the only track. Like I bang it in the club, so I think it's heavy. But it was mm. the only track on the project that I feel like maybe you put it in there because you wanted to sort of have a banger in the project rather than yeah, fits yeah, with yeah, the project. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because in the in the intro, for example, you talk about not wanting, like thinking about maybe dumbing shit down, but. Mm not wanting to. Yeah, yeah. And then the Cash Money record's there, which seems more of an ignorant club record. Does yeah, that make yeah, sense? Yeah, 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 So what was the thought process behind putting that one into the project? Um, do you know what? There was definitely a, a bit of talk about, you know, having, just making sure that we have at least a couple of songs that are fun and enjoyable as well. Do you know what right. I mean? And it's always been something that I've, like, not always, but more recently, I've been kind of conscious of that, especially within a body of work. Let me kind of just have at least one or two moments that's not entirely for me. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. not like selfishly just like, this is what I want here and 
forget everybody else. Like, I, I wanted people to have fun. But because I actually enjoyed making the record, that's what made me think, okay, this is a fun moment. Like, it's a genuine fun moment, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <clears throat> I had so much fun making the song, do you know what I mean? And with um the Green Light one with Low Week as well, I had so much fun making that song. So listening back to it, I just kind of get taken back to that place, you know what I mean? So, right. yeah, fun moments, man. And don't forget, there was one line, and I don't think it is, but because <laughs> I had to re you know what's coming. I know here. exactly what it is. I, 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 I don't think it is, but yeah, because yeah, I yeah. I literally replayed it to myself like four or five times. I was like, yeah. he's not, is he? I'm not. No, nah, nah. he's not. Do you so know what? Are on. there any subliminal shots in Don't Forget? No, nah, man. But it's crazy because I done um, I done something with ID Mag the other day, yeah. just like a little recap of the project. And Hattie asked me as well. But I was like, no, it's so crazy because I was like, just hit up Getz. Just ask Getz when I sent him the verse. Like, I sent Getz the verse before Big For Your Boots came out. Right, okay. So yeah. it was just like, it was just a cool line, in it? Like, yeah, I empty yeah, yeah. Big For My Boots, I fit inside my Tims. And then Storms drop Big For Your Boots like yeah. a week or so later. You get me? Yeah, it was mad. It's a mad one. It's a mad one. I'm, st <laughs> I'm still waiting for Storms to phone me and say, what's that yo, line? Yo, yo, what's yeah. going on? Come on, bro. <laughs> no, but that's like... That's that's my brother, brother, brother. Like way before any of this, you know. What yeah, I, mean? I know you. Uh, that's the thing. I knew you two were cool from before music. Yeah, and yeah, before yeah. You both bust as well, so yeah. That's what I was like. Nah, he's not. Yeah, and it's, a weird, be, no, it's a weird. it's a weird one like, though. Like I don't know. Is it? <laughs> yeah, it's just one of them. Sometimes it just happens like that in life. Sometimes, like I sent gets the verse. Yeah. Storms put the tune out about a week later. You get me? So Mad. coincidental one, man. My brother. Mm -hmm. You don't really hear too many like rappers and grandma is going on that angle on their relationship with other people and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, so, definitely. Like, I, I, think, I, I think it's probably my favourite track off the album. If a I'm lot honest. of people say that as well, you know. And it's the first, I think it's the first time in this project that we hear you singing as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when, what point mm. were you comfortable like really putting down the harmonies on the mic and when, you, when were you like, right, I don't need anyone else to sing this, I'm going to do this myself? Do you know what, i kind of been like doing it here and there for a little while. I think Pretty Brown Eyes might have been the first time. And that was about, that might have been about two years ago, a year and a half ago, you know what I'm saying? So um, kind of, I don't know, I always wanted to do it, man. It kind of just comes from all the different types of music that I listen to. But then, um, like, I think this project is the first time I kind of gauged it and kind of understood, like, what I can do and what I can't do and what I shouldn't even attempt to do. Like, there's songs that I've done like a year or so ago where I've really been going for it, bro. Like, <laughs> trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's because in my head I'm thinking, I've got auto-tune here, I've got reverb here. Like, I'm not going to sound too bad. But then I've tried to like take advantage of the auto-tune and mm -hmm. do some crazy shit right, yeah, that's yeah. like <laughs> way out of my palette, bro. You know what I mean? So on this project, like I just kind of, I think I gauge like where my vocals should be when I'm singing. So that's why my vocals when I sing on this are just really mellow, almost mm -hmm. like I'm talking. It's all within your range. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. When you came up with that tune, was it an idea that you had and then you brought Dotty in or did you come up with the idea together? Um, I just kind of, I hit Dotty up. Like, Dotty's just literally one of my closest friends in the world. So I hit him up, I was like, oh, I want you to come like, to a session for the project. And then he was like, yeah. So we was in the room and then... um. I think Soul was starting to beat, like some kind of piano stuff he was doing. And then I clocked Dotty was like in one corner writing some bars. So then I was thinking, all right, I need to, I need to come up with, because I knew the angle I wanted to go for the song and the concept. So I was like, I need to come up with a rough chorus quickly before he gets too into whatever it is that he's writing now. Mm -hmm. Cause I knew like, he did he didn't know the concept I was going for. So I kind of just like walked around a couple of times and came up with that idea, like the first half of the chorus. And then just quickly went over to him. I was like, oh, listen to this, like sang it in his ear quickly. And then he just like scrapped his bars. I was like, all right, cool, like, let's <laughs> go, you get me? So then, yeah, it was, a, it was a sick session though, man. Like a proper, like a proper personal one, you get me? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Green Light is mm -hmm. the next one. Yeah. Now, <laughs> uh, is Green Light a real story? Are they the names <laughs> of real girls? Because if they are, I need to know the secret, bro. Like, no, man. It's, it's, <laughs> you know what it is? It was just like, I really like um, 
Jay Z goes 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 in it. Okay, yeah. So I kind of just wanted to put put like a little spin on that. You know what I'm saying? So um, that was just that really like. I didn't. No, nah, it's not all real just a girls. Bit of fun. Like, yeah, it was just literally fun. You know what I'm saying? It, yeah. it wasn't like real girls that I know or whatever. Big up I, to Sade, <laughs> Ria. I've got them here: Mercedes, Shanice, Jesse, Jody, Sarah, Talisha, Jeez, Jenny. Jenny. I was like, wow, yeah. this guy is going in. You nah, know? No, <laughs> no, that that was definitely just a fun one. Like, you get me? It was it was a, a fictional story, a novel, with notebook. Yeah. Um, you mentioned your son a few times through the project actually congratulations yeah, yeah, yeah. by the thank way I haven't you, seen bro. you since you became a daddy thank you man um, how do you find balancing fatherhood with like a music career because a music career ain't a 9 to 5 it doesn't switch yeah. off um, yeah but it, that could kind of I think that might make it a bit easier though do you know what I mean because I feel like if I if I did have like you know 9 to 5 that would probably be 9 to 5 Monday to Friday Right. And you can't really compromise that, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So with the music, I can at least, you know, I've got like a management team that's understanding and they know what days are what days I'm with my son and what days I'm not, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's literally now what we've done is kind of crammed like 99% of things into half of the week, right, if, that, yeah, yeah. if that makes sense. And then the other half of the week I'm with, with my son. But, you know, there's a couple things I could do like I could I, w- I took him to radio the other day like it's not it's not like when I have him I just can't do anything you know what I mean yeah. but at the same time I still want to be able to enjoy my time with him so I just don't really want to be working when, I, when I've got him would you want your son to grow up and have a career in music would you want him to get into the music industry or would you be like yo I- I've um, learned a few things like yeah <laughs> no, you know what direction. it is though I think I know I just I'd support him and like whatever he wanted to do, but um, you know, a big thing for me, not just with my son, just with like my family, with anyone that I know really, I always try to help people to learn from, like, learn from my lessons or my mistakes without having mm-hmm. to make it themselves. So, especially with him, you know, I feel like I just teach him as much as I could if he wanted to do that, but um. <laughs> I'd rather if he wanted to get into music, I'd rather him be like a producer or something. Though Do you I know guess I, mean? I guess you kicked down some doors already that could kind of help him. Yeah, out. yeah, 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 definitely. But I think yeah, I'd rather him be like a producer than a rapper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, a producer could have like you could have eight singles out at one time if you if you want really. You know what I mean? As a rapper, you just have that one that you kind of focus on or whatever. But try and teach him little tricks of the trade for sure. Mm. Unless you're Drake, in which case you got like. 18, 18 songs in the singles, top 40. yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Speaking of Drake, actually, there was an Instagram post mm-hmm. that um did did pretty well for you, I guess. Yeah, yeah. When, uh, yeah, yeah. when Drake just posted up the picture of you, yeah, which yeah, a bit that, mad was, that was a random one. Usually, it'd be the other way around, like people posting pictures with Drake, but yeah, he's yeah, yeah. obviously a fan of you. Did yeah. anything materialize from that situation, or was it literally just like you bucked um, each other at the show? And yeah, no, yeah, we just bucked each other at the show or whatever, and then um it was weird because like when I came in the room. He was in there already, and I, I, it's weird because I don't feel like he knew who I was, but something just told him to like say hello to me. So right. I came in the room and he came up to me like, "Wow, well, my brother!" Da, 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 da. And I was just chatting to him quickly. Um, we took the pic, and then yeah, and then like he posted it up the next day. But I think it might have just been like the conversation we had kind of made him ask someone out. Oh, who's that guy? And right, then that's yeah. why he posted up the pic the next day. Because my Instagram just started going crazy. I got like two, three, four thousand followers like wow. in like an hour, two <laughs> hours. You <laughs> get me? Yeah, it was crazy. And then I was looking at it thinking, what's just happened? And I was like, let me check Drake's trail. I mean, Drake's Insta. And then, yeah, he posted the pic. Sick. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. a good look, man. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, so the last track on the project I want to speak to about is the last track on the project, funnily enough. Yeah, um, easier. It's easier. Mm-hmm. That's, so that's like a very... A very deep like heartfelt record so yeah. first of all is that <clears throat> again from what you told me i'm just taking yeah. that that's your perspective like that's something you're yeah, going um, through rather than what writing it in third person no that one was definitely for four people if that makes sense so right. it was kind of like you know certain things when i say like the line about depression like i've never been diagnosed with that do you know what i'm saying but mm-hmm. there's certain like things and emotions and stuff that i feel like a way more commonplace that we are, than we actually know. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. um, 
it was kind of like a song like let me let me say this line and say that line because I know that friend and that cousin's been through that so let me put this down now to kind of like when people hear that they're like raw so that's normal then like some people might be like oh struggling to struggling to stay awake drinking coffee till I get the shakes or whatever like someone might have heard that line and been like raw like I thought that was only me I thought yeah, only yeah. I had I had ever been through that or like said you wouldn't make me leave my bed if you could see what's in my head reading invitations that these people sent thinking maybe I should sleep instead but a lot of people must have felt like that at some point you know what I mean and I've got friends that have personally told me about their own situations and their own problems and issues you know what I'm saying so some of it is me some of it is my friends some lines might just be like something I saw someone tweet one day do you know what I mean but it's kind of like I look at that song like a big bag and it's like everyone can just dip into the bag and take out a line for themselves like the first line might be the one that helps you the second line might be the one that helps him do you know what i mean and like so many people tweet me message me even someone emailed me randomly just talking about the song you get me just telling me like how much the song means to them how much it's helped them and stuff and that's like the most important song on the project for me just because of that yeah it's it's something that i think like a lot of people, especially in music, especially like artists in your position and stuff, they probably do all go through a similar yeah, mindset, sure. but no one really talks about it mm-hmm. because no one's really talking about it. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I thought that was that was definitely dope for you to put that on a record and and put it out there. I, I know I've seen you tweet this, and so I know you hate people saying it, but I feel like the project's highly underrated. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I think I've listened to it front to back loads of times now. Mm-hmm. And it's to date, I think this is your best work. Yeah, yeah, same. I feel, I feel that way too. Um, I think the timing of the release was a little bit bad. Yeah, because it kind of got overshadowed by just Drake, endless A list yeah. projects. But mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'd urge anyone out watching now, go and check it out, man. It's on iTunes, right? Yeah, iTunes, Spotify, it's everywhere, man. And I think the thing with music is kind of like, especially with quality control, this, the quality control series is not for today or tomorrow do you mm-hmm. know what I mean so it's like that's why I knew it was coming out and I just you like I didn't want to push it back or hold it back because this is not really for today or tomorrow it's just right. like it's you know like a, a message in a bottle or something it's just yeah, there yeah, like yeah. and whenever you find it that's when you find it do you know what I mean and like whatever it means to you is what it means to you I feel like the underrated thing it's obviously like a real life thing that's there. Like I can see it and I acknowledge it, but yeah. I kind of urge people to just like if you rate it, then just rate it. Like don't worry who overlooks it, who do, yeah. doesn't. Like if you're awake, then don't worry about who's sleeping. You know what I mean? That's it. Well, I'm awake, man. I'm fully on board with it. So <laughs> bonkers, been a pleasure. Love, man. Always, bro. DJ Double here with Bonkers. Go and cop that quality control 2.0. While you're there, check out number one if you haven't already as well. And we're out.